One of the questions that I get a lot about the R6 is how does it work with older glass? Something like this. Let's find out. Hey everybody, welcome to Photos with Yanni. I shoot with a Canon R6 and today I wanted to talk about older EF glass and how does it work with the RF mount. A lot of the questions that I get is how does the camera handle older lenses? How is the autofocus? How does it respond? Is there anything you should know about? Do you need an adapter? This is why I wanted to do a quick video on two of my lenses that I already have, that they're EF and one more that's coming up at the end of the month. So we have the 7200 2.8 EF L lens, which is one of my personal favorites. And then you have the 50 1.8 EF, which is, I actually don't use that one that much. At this point, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, even for YouTube to acknowledge my existence. So starting out, why the EF version? Uh, simple. Have you seen how much the RF versions cost? I mean, I would love to have it, but I thought to myself, maybe the EF is good enough. It has been good enough for a lot of professional photographers for a while, hasn't it? Spoiler alert, it is. It is more than good. Especially on the 7200 2.8 EF lens, it's one size. It doesn't change, it's not an Audi or a Nini like the RF 70 by 200 so that's what I love about it. So let's get to it. In order to accommodate uh, older EF lenses to the new RF mount, you need an adapter like that. Now mind you, this also works with the older EFS lenses, but keep in mind when, if you are going to put an EFS, which is a crop sensor lens, to a full frame camera, you're going to lose megapixels. Math. Uh, 1.6 on the R6, I think that's 20 megapixels. You're gonna end up with something like seven or eight on the crop sensor, if that's that's your thing. I mean, I would love to use a 1585, but not that much. First off, this thing comes into three distinct flavors. This is the simpler version, as you can see. Let me see, oh, yeah, it's not focusing. Okay, there you go, something like this. This is the first version. So basically there's no glass element on this one. And what it does is that on one side, it goes to your lens and it aligns. And then this one goes to your camera. Pretty simple. This is a regular one. There's one with a control ring and there's another one with drop-in filters. The prices are from $99 to $299 and $399. I have two regular ones and I have zero issues with them whatsoever. So how do they work on the R6? They work fantastic. They are incredible. You're not losing anything. It's as if the lenses are native to the mount, which is pretty incredible. Canon did an incredible job adapting older lenses to the new RF mount, and the new RF mount is actually wider, and you're letting a lot more light in, so that's pretty fantastic to me. They have opened a plethora of older glass right now, of good older glass, that's also cheaper for the amazing, you know, new cameras that they just put out. I mean, you can go back and get a kick-ass 80-200, you can go back and get like a 1740 or a 1735 uh, f.28 constant aperture and those are like four hundred dollars as opposed to the new you know rf 15 by 35 that's like three grand i'm not knocking rf glass rf glass is incredible it's just for the very first time in my photographic history we have access to professional l grade lenses for very competitive prices i mean the lenses are incredible i'm not exaggerating the 70 to 200 is my pride and joy let's start with the usage basically i love using the 70 200 for landscapes beyond the actual usage of portraits you know you use this for portraits a lot it's a portrait lens but i love using it for landscapes it creates an incredible sense of separation of like subject and background and it makes it pop. I mean, shooting landscapes, especially at 200 millimeters, can be jarring, but the end results like speak for themselves. So let's cover the important things first. One, autofocus. If I have to be honest, that the autofocus on the R6 is like cheating. It's so unbelievably good. It's incredible. It allows me to focus on composition and exposure rather than have to worry about have I nailed the shot. Yes, I have nailed the shot. I love especially using older EF 70 to 200 for wildlife and birding because unlike the 70 to 200 RF, you can put a 2X teleconverter or a 70 to a 200 EF. This little piece of extra glass right here was $350. You get a professional L lens 70 to 200, you put it on this one and you have a 140 by 400 5.6 constant aperture great for birding you can get incredible results 
There is zero delay in autofocus, none. Even with a teleconverter, even by itself. It's mind blowing that the RF7200 does not support the 2X tele. It's mind blowing to me. The 50, the 50 is ridiculously fast for portraits. It's not the sharpest lens. I mean, I would love a 1.2, but you're talking about $120 lenses right here. $120 lens, I mean, it's a hundred bucks used and it's sharp. You can use it for portraits. You can use it for street photography. I mean, this is ridiculously sharp. No joke, the autofocus is so fast, I caught a bird going to the bathroom. Two, image quality. I mean, 7200, 50 millimeters. You're talking about two of the sharpest lenses that Canon has, and the image is superb. You're getting incredible crisp images paired with the sensor of the R6, which is also I'm working on a, on a video for the R6, actually. And it's, it just blows my mind, the image quality. Also, because the R6 has IBIS, this has IS. With the IBIS of the R6, you can get incredible steady hands. This doesn't, but you can shoot so fast with the ISO performance, you're doing great. The 50 is above average, more than adequate. I'm very happy with it. The 70 and 200, chef's kiss. Three, weather sealing. Some lenses have it, some lenses don't. You have an L-type series professional lens. I'm pretty sure I can take this to Niagara Falls and it's gonna be just fine. I can drop it into the sea. I can probably shoot underwater with this. I wouldn't do that, do not do that. The L-series lenses are built like tank. They're weather resistant, uh, rain resistant, dust resistant. You can take it out. You know, I've taken it out in snow. I've taken it out in, in hail. Uh, I'm pretty rough with my lenses. It is a little bit on the heavy side, but that's okay. It's an even trade-off. So while you can definitely splurge on the RF version, keep your options open for the EF versions. These lenses have been good enough for years for professional photographers that get incredible results, stunning results. There are different avenues with getting good EF glass without blowing up the bank. There are multiple ways to get results. Plus, there's a lot of vintage glass out there that will allow you to get the look that you want for a fraction of the price. I'm not knocking the RF lenses. The RF lenses are superb. They're incredible. They're, they're a miracle of engineering. I just don't have $3,000 to drop on every single lens. I would love to have a 28 by 70 2.0. I would love to have a lens like that. But that lens is 3100 and there's people who are paying for it. At the same time, you can pick up an EF 70 to 2, I mean, EF 24 to 70 2.8 for like a fourth of the price. There's even FD adapters for older lenses from like the 80s and the 90s. Canon has been doing this for a while and they put out some incredible, incredible glass. Matter of fact, my next lens is a 16 by 35 EF 2.8 L series two and I can't wait to get my hands on it at the end of this month. Overall, at the end of the day, I'm going with the EF Avenue. You date your cameras and you marry your lenses. That's what they say, right? Well, right now, EF Professional L-grade glass is a fraction, is a third, a fourth. You can get it used of the price of actual RF glass. You can buy from a reputable place, KEH, MPB, Adorama, b &H Photo. No, they do not pay me. I wish they paid me. You can get an incredible 70 to 200 2.8 series 3 lens or series 2 lens for about a third of what the RF version would cost. And that's a good deal for me too. You know, I would love to pick up a 50 1.2 EF, an 85 1.2, a 105. <clears throat> I would like a 400 EF, a 600. I know I did not cover a video on this, but even on video, the results are stunning. So I hope that answered your question. It's simple enough. You can definitely use EF lenses with a new RF mount without having any issues whatsoever. Until next time, this is Photos with Yanni. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and smile because it's contagious. See ya.